So here in Australia, we're home to the largest kingfishers on earth. That would of course be the kookaburras, but we've also got plenty of smaller kingfishers. And today, we wanna to introduce you to this guy, the sacred kingfisher. Stick around guys, this is one beautiful and interesting bird. So these guys are found all throughout Australia, the whole way around the coast, and they follow inland waterways as far in as they can go. They're basically found everywhere except the desert center of the country. But they're not only found here in Australia, they're also found throughout New Zealand, they're found in Papua New Guinea, parts of Indonesia and parts of the Western Pacific Islands. So they've got a massive distribution. Now their name Sacred Kingfisher actually comes because the Polynesians in the Western Pacific believe these guys to be a sacred species. They're a totem animal and an important part of their culture. So Sacred Kingfisher it is. Throughout this range, they're found in a wide variety of habitats, from mangroves, creek sides to dry woodlands. So these guys, despite being a kingfisher, don't necessarily be, need to be right on the water's edge. They're also not really an obligate fish eater. So while they may be kingfishers, these guys live mostly off insects and other small animals like skinks. They will take fish from time to time, but particularly here in Australia, where water is not necessarily an abundant resource, these guys will eat lots of terrestrial prey. They hunt this prey by basically hanging out on low branches, not far above the ground, and they pounce on the ground on anything crawling underneath them. Then they'll pick them up, take them back to their perch, and eat them up there. As far as breeding goes, these guys are solitary for most of the time. But come breeding season, they do pair up, and they're actually really mutual parents. Both the mum and dad help construct a nest, which is often in a termite mound or a hollow log 20 metres above the ground, and uh, they'll excavate a hole in that termite nest, and the mum will lay up to five eggs. Both parents will take part in constructing the nest, and both parents will take part in incubating and feeding the babies. And in a good year, these guys can go on to lay a second clutch of eggs. So they can breed twice a year if the conditions are favorable. One thing I find particularly cool is that these guys actually migrate in the southern part of their range. So here in Southern Australia, while you find these guys at some times of the year, over the winter months, they fly north and they spend their time in Northern Australia, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and a single pair in 2016 was found as far away as the Philippines, which is a long way to fly for such a little bird. They're certainly goers. Now, over in New Zealand, they also migrate over there, but rather than flying over seas, they fly from one habitat type to another. Basically, they come up and down the mountains. They spend their summer months up at altitude in the cool forests, and in wintertime, when it gets cold, they come down to the lowlands and they seek out open country. So they have an altitudinal migration, which is pretty unique. One thing that I find particularly crazy is that these guys can have such a massive distribution. Pretty much all of Australia, all of New Zealand and all these other areas over in Southeast Asia, yet so few people actually know what they are. A lot of people do know about kingfishers, but are completely unaware how many species they are and the diversity that we have. And this guy, the sacred kingfisher, should be one of the most recognizable. They're a beautiful bird and they're certainly a part of the landscape. So I hope you've learned something about them today. And from now on in, you'll know what a sacred kingfisher is. Now, as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and uh, if you can do us a favour and check out our mates at Animals Anonymous, they're the guys looking after this beautiful baby, and uh, they've been kind enough to let us film with him. The last thing that would be a massive help, and if you're enjoying the videos, uh, help us bring out even more, is if you check us out on Patreon. It's the assistance from our Patreon supporters that help us get interstate and visit facilities and show you animals like this beautiful boy here that we couldn't show you otherwise. So with that being said, I hope you've learned something new and enjoyed the video. Check on back next week. In the meantime, be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care.